Well, let's bring out the entire cast and creative team of The Gifted. So Matt, where did this come from? Where's the genesis of this? One of the great favors that Days of Future Past did for <laughs> all of us was um, establish that there are many streams. The idea is that this is definitely its own universe. We're not in the same exact timeline as any particular movie or comic. We're doing our own thing. The X-Men are gone. Why are the X-Men gone? That is a thing in the show. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's not just that they're too expensive for television. <laughs> Steven and Amy, you guys have done genre stuff before. What made this special? What did you like about this in particular? I was really taken with, with the way that Matt had incorporated the family aspect. So much of it's about finding a family with, yeah. because you've been cast out of your own family. And I really like that this took a family that, and they, they stay together and they decide to survive through it together. I think the difference about, uh, with the X-Men in comparison to other superheroes in general is that they don't choose to have this, this gift or curse bestowed upon them and they're, they're ordinary people living extraordinary lives. We're in this cool universe, but in reality, the situations that we're put into are very similar to what's happening in real life. I kind of wanted to just blow stuff up, you know? <laughs> <laughs> in the movies, uh, you know, you see some people training their powers some, mm -hmm. uh, but for the most part, because of the time compression of films, uh, people pretty much have to have their powers from the get-go. In the show, we have the opportunity to do that over a longer period of time. There's a real relationship between the characters and who they are and what their powers are. Like, Emma, like, for your power, do you practice in the mirror, like, the different <laughs> gestures? Because you have very specific sort of, like, uh, not yeah. voguing, if you will, but uh, very, very much I would voguing, say, yes, you know, say. <laughs> Matt was at, and Derek were at um, Dallas Comic Con, and they met some people cosplaying as Polaris, mm -hmm. and they filled them in on what the Magneto hand is, which is this. And sure enough, we look back in the comics, and he does it like that. And but we like sort of made it more like feminine. So there's like a feminine draw to it. It's the strangest thing, but you know. You just go with it. It's like, so much strain! <laughs> um, and then they're like, it's the size of a volleyball. Okay, yeah, now it's a little bigger, okay. And now it's larger than you, so you just like, <laughs> Blair, so tell me a little bit about Thunderbird. He explained his power, because he's sort of a tracker, right? Yes, yes, he has a, a tracker background um, from his, it's related to his Apache culture, and then he uh, also has sort of a foresight and heightened senses which aids him in his ability to, to track. And then beyond that, he He's also He's just has absurdly a... beautiful. <laughs> um, do we have any questions from the audience? So what in the coming episodes are we gonna do to showcase the many kinds of diverse people in our culture and race and on screen, but also in mutant abilities, but while avoiding tropes and stereotypes? I think that's the entire point of, of the show, is to be able to explore the X-Men have always been about the other and the acceptance and protecting and serving those who hate and fear you. And we're able in this show to take a different look at it and also use it as a mirror for the world we live in today.